Hi there, I'm Karen Marie, and this is Psyched Up for Sunday, February 21st, 2021. So as I've been doing a lot lately, I'm going to be talking about the transits for the week, and then I'm going to do little mini readings for each of the 12 signs. So Mercury has now gone direct as of yesterday. So it will still be in its shadow, which means it's still be going, it's moving forward as are all the planets right now. So that's a big positive, um, but it will still be in its shadow, meaning it'll still going back over the area. It's already gone retrograde until uh, March 12th. So you may still seem kind of fuzzy headed or things may still not resolve completely um, that maybe have been kinked up over the last three weeks until March 12th. So, um, but no more new incidences of miscommunication. If anything comes up, it's something that's already been started. So, and like I talked about last week, we had the Saturn square Uranus event, which is Saturn, our structures, our constrictions, lockdowns, government, institutions, corporations, squaring off with Uranus, which is in Taurus, which rules uh, the earth, weather, unexpected things, because Taurus rules those things, and Uranus is in, in, in that sign, and so, I live here in Austin, Texas. And so on top of the pandemic, pandemic, which has us in a lockdown situation, we had unexpected, surprising for us weather. Like we were below freezing for eight days in a row and it rarely even gets to freeze in here in Austin. And so we had, you know, I think the, the lowest temp we had was five degrees here in Austin. And, um, you know, four inches of snow that stayed on the ground for a week, <laughs> like never in my lifetime have I ever experienced that. Um, and then on top of that, we had the unexpected power outages and water crisis, which is still the most of the power's back on, at least in Austin, but uh, water, we're still having to boil our water. So that's unexpected things. That's a classic example of this Saturn Uranus square off. So they're still loosely squared. Um, they will be squared all year long, and they will also have another exact square in June and another exact square in December. So what else came up in this last week beyond this um, surprising um, weather here locally, there was several volcanoes that went off on the planet, and we also had some earthquakes. So definitely extreme surprising weather things will be the theme of this year. So, um, so the sun is now, as I'm recording this, at three degrees of Pisces. So as the sun goes to the transit in Pisces, Pisces rules the 12th house in astrology. So the 12th house is the, it's past life. It's the unconscious. It's the deep the deep places within our psyche. Um, and so as the sun transits this, we may have some of our deep fears come up. We may have past life issues come up, um, unconscious, subconscious things that we've repressed or are stuffed down may surface up. Um, these come to the surface for healing, for release, for clearing. So there's a lot about the Pisces energy that's about releasing old things. These are things that we've all been shown is my sense of it. Chiron is at six degrees of Aries. So it's been in the early degrees of Aries all last year. And so it's been bringing up and showing us these areas that we felt wounded when it comes to ourselves. And Chiron actually moves to seven degrees this week on Wednesday. So it's going to take on a new theme, which is um, more about how we may have felt wounded when it comes to our spiritual lives, our psychic abilities, our intuition. Um, and so there's an opportunity for healing of that. And Pisces is a very spiritual, very psychic energy as well. So Neptune is in Pisces right now. Neptune is at 20 degrees as I record this. So it's in a two is a feeling state and zero is holding space. So it's kind of it can feel kind of wonky or wiggy. Um, and then the sun will be approaching it 
you know, not this week, but by um, in, in a couple of weeks, the sun will be conjunct Neptune. So I'll talk about that probably in next week's um, video instead of today. So in the early degrees of Pisces, it's illuminating how we feel about ourselves spiritually, how we feel about ourselves psychically. Um, what is our spiritual truths? What do we understand to be true about these things? So they'll be bringing these things to light. Um, Venus right now, as I record this, is at 25 degrees of Aquarius and it bops up into Pisces by Thursday this week. So on the, at the last degrees of Aquarius, it may be bringing up themes again as it gets to um, the last degrees and then to 29 degrees, which it'll be doing on Wednesday. It brings the conclusion of what it's been teaching in the transit of going through Aquarius um, to a head. It's the final exam time for Venus and Aquarius, which is how well do we vibe with others? How are we getting along with the people in our lives, our networks, our connections, our friends, our bosses, um, our coworkers? Um, and so also Venus is who we love, what we love, how we receive energies. And so even can bring up receiving uh, new incoming relationships here in the next few days. Uh, money, Venus also rules money. So it could be like money coming in. And again, anything in Aquarius can be sudden unexpected because it's ruled by Uranus. And um, uh, so we still have, right now we still have Venus in Aquarius. We have Jupiter in Aquarius right now. It's at 15 degrees. Um, Mercury is at 11 degrees and Saturn is at seven degrees right now. So it's still square Uranus, which is at seven. There's a lot of the seven energy going on. The North and South nodes are at 16 degrees of Gemini, the North node and 16 degrees of Sag respectively. Um, the South node represents our collective past life karma. The North node is all our focused attention. And so these are all, we're being asked with these planets that make out to uh, seven to focus on our spiritual connection, our intuition. And I believe that everyone has intuitive abilities. We're all psychic. Some of us have the volume turned up pretty loud. Others volume is turned down or off, but everyone can enhance and develop the intuition that you do have. And it shows up differently for everybody. But that intuitive voice is the voice of the higher self. So the spiritual psychic are one as far as I believe in that I see it and, and feel that in my life. When I take action based on how my intuition is guiding me, I'm in rhythm with my life. Um, if I don't take action on things I feel in, intuitively guided to do, I get like a block or a stuck energy backing up. Um, and I see that with a lot of psychic people, a lot of creative energy, the creativity uh, energy often comes through in the very same way that psychic abilities come through in a channeled energy, whether you're channeling writing or you're channeling music or art um, or dance, there's all these beautiful ways where it's spirit sort of pours through and is meant to be put out. And if you're a creative individual and you're not doing your creative, whatever that is, you're not writing, you're not painting, you're not doing your music, that energy will back up. And um, I like to use the analogy of, you know, I nursed all six of my children. And so when I would be away from one of my babies, and my breasts would fill up with milk, they would just, I would be miserable and they would get rock hard. And all I wanted to do is just nurse the babies or express the milk so I could have this relief of the download. So in a similar way, when the creative energy backs up, we feel irritable internally. Um, if you're not acting on your intuition, you can be kind of gnarly and snarly. And if you're a creative person and you're not doing your creativity, you're going to feel wiggy and off. So one of the things that um, I recommend that anybody and everybody has creative abilities as well. You can pick up an adult coloring book and color in it that, you know, that is 
clearing out the creative energy. Cooking is creative. Gardening is creative. Um, how you clothe yourself is creative. So find some fashion, some place to let your creativity out when you're feeling this backed up energy. And so um, with the sun going through Pisces, we're all going to be feeling this download, this spiritual download of energy. So the collective is feeling this. So the more that you can respond, carve out space to listen to your intuition, carve out space to have your divine connection, um, meditation time, chanting prayer, quiet walks out in nature, um, you will be feeling so much better and will have um, probably download some incredible new insights, especially as the sun does cross Neptune, because Neptune is the psychic radar planet. So there's just this wonderful opportunity for a new insight spiritually, psychically to come down and come through this month. Um, so the Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Stellium, Venus is there for a couple more days. Pallas Athena is also there. And Aquarius. So we still have a lot of planets in Aquarius. So we still have this theme of how are we vibing with each other. Aquarius is also um, technology and science. And so I thought it was interesting that with all this stellium in Aquarius that we had um, a new little gadget, expensive gadget landing on Mars during this last week. So that's also fascinating to me i love to just watch astrology go oh, look look there there showing up um pluto is at 25 degrees of capricorn right now uh, that makes to a seven so pluto is death and transformation it will be moving to 26 degrees this week when does that happen oh on sunday of um uh, next weekend and so this whole week it's still at 25 so it's it's also resonating at that seven vibration so this is the week of you may feel like just being alone and doing a little um meditation retreat by yourself um where you're diving more into spiritual practices spiritual things you may be wanting to write more create more this week so we have tomorrow the sun will be moving to four degrees of Aquarius, I mean of Pisces, and we'll have the moon moving in, well, it's already at zero degrees of Cancer right now. We're exactly on top of my midheaven, so that's a good time to re be recording this video. Um, so the midheaven, just FYI, in your chart is one of those compass points that's like, this is the direction that um, you're supposed to be headed. And so um, Cancer is a healing energy it's a nurturing energy it's the energy of the moon listening to intuition mothering nurturing healing of all kinds and so it also people tend to be extra sensitive emotionally um, when the moon is moving through cancer because cancer rules the moon and so for the next couple of days you might feel extra sensitive emotionally you may need extra space just to process your feelings also, the sun being at four degrees of um, Pisces tomorrow is the breakdown, breakthrough energy. It's where you can have stuff just get up in your face. And so with the moon and Cancer, Neptune at 20 degrees, which is feeling and holding space for feelings and holding, it can, it can be a great psychic day, but it can feel real, real weird. A, attached stuff and things in the world um great time to meditate chant pray do psychic things uh, if you're trying to do things in the world it may feel a bit wonky and you might get your feelings hurt with um something that gets stirred up that hurts your feelings easy to do when the moon is in cancer um, on Wednesday, we'll have Mars trining Pluto. So a trine is usually a positive energy combining the best of the planet. So Mars represents our ego. Um, it's how we take action, how we move forward in the world. And so Mars is in the late, later degrees of Taurus. And um, Pluto, like I said, is at 25 degrees. So Mars being at 25, this week right now it's at 24 so it'll be moving up to 25 by wednesday and so again here is this beautiful seven energy of spiritual resolutions like this would be the week to get 
great insights. If you've been questioning what the why of something, this would be the week to get your answers that you may get them in your dreams. You may get them um, coming in in all kinds of ways. I feel like when you're being clearly guided, it shows up in more than one way. You'll get, for example, three times things coming up for you. Um, it'll just be mentioned several times um, if, if it's something that that's important for you to be doing. So Chiron moves to seven degrees on Wednesday as well. The moon will be moving into Leo. So we tend to feel more um, optimistic and positive and want to socialize and come from the heart when the moon is in Leo. So the moon will be in Leo on Wednesday and Thursday. And on Thursday is when Venus moves into Pisces. So it'll be clipping on along here pretty quickly into wrapping up the lessons of Aquarius and then moving into Pisces. And it, it'll feel really lovely in Pisces. And you may feel that energy shift and switch. You may feel the Mars trining Pluto. So Pluto's death and transformation. Mars is the ego, how we move forward in life. And so there may be transformative action that you take or realizations that you have about about how to take action in your life around certain things. You may be getting these downloads on um, Wednesday and Thursday. The sun will sextile Uran Uranus at seven degrees on Thursday and Saturn moves to eight degrees. So it's Saturn's at seven degrees at the beginning of this week. Um, so there's just a sweet energy this week. It's a lot more low key. We'll still have this backdrop of the square of Uranus and Saturn. And Eris is still loosely squaring Pluto, which is protesting. And, you know, so there's still this sort of riled up energy that's a backdrop, sort of background noise. But on a personal level, it feels more quiet. Like the energy of Pisces is more like vibing with yourself and vibing with spiritual things. Whereas Aquarius is let's all vibe with each other. How do we vibe with each other? Let's do this together. Um, and so you may want to distance yourself, like I said, and have some time alone. The question I would ask yourself this week is how do I treat myself? Do I listen to my intuition? Do I follow its direction? Do I take the action that I feel guided to take? Or do I get it and I just disregard it? And I know, I know, I know, I know I should do that, right? And I always tell people, don't shit on yourself. And if you if you see this mental harshness within, like that may be one of the things that gets revealed because the sun in Pisces is about really sweetening it up, softening it up. Um, um, there's a service energy attached that I'm picking up just psychically of like wanting to do service to, for yourself, like how, if it's one thing to help someone else, how can you help yourself? What do you need to do to help yourself? Like if, if you were describing to your best friend or a counselor or a therapist, the things that are going on in your life, what kind of guidance do you feel like you would get? And I feel like this is the week that you can give that to yourself. You may get that guidance coming through others as well, but it'll be confirming guidance you're already receiving yourself this week. So there's an energy of like the heart, um, especially when the moon moves into Leo on Wednesday and Thursday, it's like listening to your heart. The Uranus sextiling the sun is also, it, a sextile is also a sweet aspect. So there can be like a sudden surprising Sweet kiss, a spiritual realization, an aha moment, a breakthrough psychically, spiritually. Uh, and then when Saturn moves into eight, eights are about making commitment. I'm making a decision. I decide I'm going to do this. So I really feel like if there's been something you've been questioning in your life, that there's, there's listening to your intuition, following the heart, and then staying open for a reveal. Like, it feels like it's not a lot of time to take action. Like I said, when the Mars is turning Pluto on Wednesday, you may get some inspired direction about how to take action. You may just need to process that and chew on that um, for a couple of days and then make a commitment to doing it. The sun is 
moves to eight degrees on Friday and the moon moves into Virgo and Virgo is more service oriented and uh, attention to the health and attention to detail. We can tend to be a little bit harsh on ourselves too, um, critical. So watch that, watch the inner talk. Um, and so, and again, with the Pisces energy, it can represent old karma, old past habits. So there's this commitment to looking at where is our car karma? How does, what kind of grooves is our karmic uh, energy flowing down? And this can be the week to change your groove. We have a full moon on um, Friday night, late Saturday morning, early. It's at 2.17 a.m. Austin time. So if you're staying up late Friday night, you'll be seeing the full moon. You'll be seeing it in the skies anyway. But this is a wonderful, full moons are always great times to release things, let things go. Think people can break up on the full moon. So in the full moon being in Virgo, it's you might have an illumination or a letting go of something that has to do with your health, has to do with how you're helping other people. Virgo is that service and helping others. Um, so, and with this realization that you might have this week, it may be, oh, I need to stop doing this. I need to let, and so making a commitment on Friday and then taking action on Saturday when the full moon, like this would be a wonderful time to take a ride. So if, if you need to let go of a habit, let go of a relationship, let go of a situation that's not working for you, this is the weekend to do it with the take a ride on the full moon and let it go. Um, so the full moon will be happening at eight degrees and 57 uh seconds i don't know what the equivalent um term is right there actually it's gone out of my brain so it rounds up to a nine um the full moon so it's at this nine energy which is about taking action like i'm done with this i'm gonna i'm gonna shift this i'm gonna let this go so if there's been something that's weighing on you like put it up. This could be a great time to do a ritual this weekend around the full moon Friday nights or you know to and when you go to bed Friday night, definitely have that intention of what you're wanting to release in your life, what you're wanting to let go of. Um, Pluto moves to 26 on Sunday, and this is about like um, Pluto at the last degrees, it ha and it gets one degree then apart from uh, America's Pluto at 27. So you'll, the, it feels like it's bringing to a head this. Um, patriarchal energy that we formed our country on. So it also can be the corruption of, of power, like people who are using power over other people. So there may be news headlines that come up while Pluto is at 26 degrees starting on Sunday and then into next, it's going to stay there for a little bit, um, of people who've used their power and have done it in a corrupt way um, can come to light and be held accountable. And Pluto do doesn't play, <laughs> it transforms things. And so if this is, if someone has been um, using power incorrectly, it will be coming to a head and be coming to light. Um, I would expect um, some behaviors of our previous president to come to light with the Pluto at this degrees. So there may be headlines around him by, um, the end of this weekend or into next week um, and and into the days that follow. But I'm just taking one week at a time here in terms of what I'm looking at. So um, the notes I had written to myself is how do you treat yourself? Questions to ask yourself this week. What does your heart desire? And what karma do you want to let go of? That's the question I would bring into the new moon. What karma do you want to let go of? What old chronic issues? Because this can be the full moon that it's taken away and you don't have to repeat a karmic pattern. And karma is not necessarily bad. Karma is just a collection of all the causes that you set over all your lifetimes. So it's, it's like a bank account. A bank account can be in the red. It can be in the black, you know. So it doesn't necessarily have to be negative karma, but in the releasing of 
the full moon, it is something that you don't want anymore to let go of. You don't want to usually let go of your positive karma. But if you've been setting a lot of positive causes and you have that, then you may have some rewards coming in um, with this full moon energy. Uh, full moons can also bring strong intuition. It can bring out the lunatic in people, right? People can go cray cray around the full moon. So, um, but in Virgo, it's a lot more chill. Um, it gets exacerbated in like when the full moon's in cancer, when, it, when they're in the water signs, actually, the full moon can be extra emotional. But this Virgo is an earth sign, it's more practical. So you may have like Virgo rules the head like Mercury. And so there may be like a letting go of some thinking patterns that you have um, may, may be going on this week. So um, let's see if there's anything I feel. Jupiter is expanding things. So it is right there next to Mercury. So this Mercury, now that it's gone direct and Saturn is there pretty close um, as well. Well, Jupiter's kind of moved out of Saturn's orbit, orbit right now. But um, Mercury will just go up to 13 degrees um, so it only just moves two degrees this week. So it'll be moving closer to Jupiter by the end of the week. So there is this expansion of thinking and the opportunity to rethink your relationships, um, rethink the networks, the connections, the people you hang out with. So there may be a shift and that may be one of the things you decide to let go of too. I'm not gonna hang out with this group anymore. I'm not gonna go to these meetings anymore. Or you may go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this meeting. I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to go towards something that works for me. Um, so definitely the strong spiritual psychic energy this week. Um, feelings are at a height the next couple of days. For, so be gentle with yourself. Be extra nurturing. Realize that you may need to go somewhere and cry. I think the Pisces energy is also the wounded healer. So it can bring up the places in us that are wounded. And sometimes we just need to hug that wounded inner child and give ourselves some love. Go, just let, a, let, the, let ourselves cry, let it out. Okay, let's see what's going on for the week with all the 12 signs. We'll start with Aries. Well, okay, we have cards flying. It's the moment to moment card, Aries. I'm just gonna do one card draws, make it a make this a little bit shorter. So um, moment to moment, this is about what today do I feel guided to do? What this moment do I feel guided to do? Not trying to look too far into the future. What's up for me right now? What's in my life right now? Do I have fears of the future? Do I have baggage from the past that um, you're carrying right now? Like these are the questions, Aries, to ask yourself, what can I do right now this moment? What can I do today? And that would be a question to ask yourself every day this week. What do I want to build? What do I want to do today? What do I want to accomplish this day? Um, I would ask yourself that first thing in the morning. And then if you feel off track or spacey, as you can often feel that way, when the sun's in Pisces, because this is kind of the misty energy. And again, with the motions heightened with the cancer energy, these first couple of days, uh, you may feel guided to climb in the tub and cry. You may be guided to climb back in the bed and nap. Um, so just listen to the inner promptings. Keep asking yourself the question. The more you ask, the more you listen, the more you get answers. Um, and if you don't get any action to take, Maybe that's you're just supposed to be resting in spirit and not taking any action. So that's what I get for Aries. All righty, let's see what Taurus is doing this week. And I'm just doing one card draws, but this is if you have your sun, moon, rising, or a stellium in Taurus, the change card is coming up. Um, oh, I didn't even show Aries the card. Um, if it comes up again, I'll show it. <laughs> uh, the change card is coming up for the Taurus. So this is about um, things are in motion, things are shifting. There is definitely something on the move here for the Taurus. Um, and I definitely get the creative energy like with Taurus, you definitely are creating new things, getting, get out the paints, get out the colors, get out the instruments, get out the music and dance um, and, and, 
and let yourself um, get unstuck. I feel there's a stuck energy with the Taurus and there's a desire to like lighten up and become unstuck. And you might need to move things around, move, I mean, I'm seeing like furniture being moved around or maybe someone's moving things around in your house. Uh, if you live here in Austin, you may have to be moving things out of the way so the plumber can come fix your pipes. But um, there's some lovely creative energy on tap for the Taurus this week. All right, Gemini. Harmony card is coming up for the Gemini. So this is about listening to your intuition. It's also about connecting in with people that you feel psychically connected to, into which like the intuition in this card, the third eye is activated here and so is the heart. So this is like your heart connecting with someone that you can sense psychically. And the two dolphins can represent relationships someone you feel very psychically guided and connected to so there's definitely lots of thought around relationship this week Gemini um, and I would try to get out of your head Gemini is ruled by Mercury so you can often try to overthink things and instill offer up your thoughts try to let go of your thoughts and see what just settles in or what comes to pass what relationships um, what messages you get from others when it comes to relationships and how can you bring more harmony into your life? That's the question for Gemini this week. Cancers. The exhaustion cards coming up for Cancer. It looks like you've been taking a lot of this energy personally and, you know, cancers are usually sponges. And so this is just someone who's, I mean, the exhaustion card here says it all, right? Like, oh, I'm so tired of this. I'm, you know, I don't have the energy anymore for this. You guys may need to just curl up in a ball and cry, curl up in the ball and nap and just take a break and be gentle with yourself this week. Um, you, you just need to stop the harsh energy and you may not be able to help others you're usually someone who's bidding over backwards to help everybody else and you may not be able to do it this week you may just have to help yourself this week and that will have to do that's that's good enough okay we have the leos next sure is quicker when i just do one card video won't be so long When I do a private session, I put out a lot of cards. Um, so um, those of you who had private readings with me know that. All right, we've got the aloneness card going on, uh, Leos. And so this is about the spiritual search. This is about following the light. What is it that I feel guided to do spiritually? And it may be that you're alone. It may be a literal card where you're having to spend time by yourself or that you may be in a relationship and you feel alone in the relationship. But this is the answers are spiritual. This card says is like, look within. The answer is not outside of you is what this card says for the Leos. Um, you can find the answers through spiritual means this week. Every week, really, but especially this week, Leos. And the Virgos. The Innocence card is coming up for the Virgos. So this is about listening to wisdom. This may be listening to um, books on tape or TED talks or YouTube videos of someone who has got some wisdom. Um, it's the, the old grandfather that's clear about the priorities of things and what's important and what's not. The grasshopper, he's looking at this small creature and giving it a lot of attention. Um, so it may just be putting things in perspective and having gratitude 
this week for what you do have. Um, but I do feel like there's a seeking out of a mentor energy going on here for Virgo. So this could also be in a book, some an author that you, but it's it's definitely listening to wisdom from someone else. Not that you don't have your own is wisdom. And um, I, I feel like most truth when we hear it, even if it's for the first time, it's like, oh yeah, I know that can often happen. So listen to the truths that resonate and something within you says, I believe that. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. Um, Leos, Virgos, Libras is next. I did that right. Possibilities card is coming up representing the Libras. And um, this card says it all. Like it, there's the sky's the limit. It's about getting a higher perspective. Like this eagle here is getting a higher perspective. It can be planning a trip or journey. It can be symbolic talking about a, a spiritual journey. But the possibilities card is like anything can happen. Sky's the limit. Open up your expectations. Don't limit yourself in any way that things can surprise you. They can resolve in surprising ways or you can move forward in surprising ways. So this is some really, I, I feel like Libras are going to get a really nice surprise this week and something that makes you feel encouraged and open up and I can do this and things aren't so heavy and hard. Scorpio. Did I skip the Virgo? That's what I'm wondering. Did I skip Virgo? Or did I talk about it? I'm thinking I might have skipped it. All right, I'm going to do Virgo. Just, and if I'm doing this again, then Virgos get two cards this week. I just would rather do it twice than skip it. I get into a channel mode. Sometimes my logical mind just kind of clicks off and I get into a different space, especially because I'm changing up the format a little. Okay, so Virgo, there's the isolation card. Um, this is feeling alone, needing help, needing support, needing to cry, needing to let it go. Pull up a second card. This is about self-care this week, Virgo, caring for yourself and not necessarily for other people. Um, so yeah, Virgos like to care for others, um, be of help. It can be extra hard on yourself. So this is like needing to soften up your voice with yourself, Virgos. Okay. Now, Scorpios. Scorpio. The rebirth card. This is a powerful week for you. <laughs> like this is nothing subtle about this card. This card goes from the camel who's laying around, doesn't know what to do, to the lion that gets pissed off and has the courage to get in motion. And then this inner child is playing the flute that it's like there's a softer, creative, more spiritual energy that comes up out of the courage. So this is a major transformation. Rebirth is like a death and transformation, a death and new birth. So there's something new being born for the Scorpios this week. Uh, it feels exciting. Um, and powerful and very spiritual, very much um, beyond what you could really do with your own effort. So it feels like the hand of the divine is definitely coming up for Scorpios this week. Um, you can feel that you're being guided and by a higher source energy. All right, Sages. Postponement card. So something you've been wanting to do is a bit on hold. You may be feeling a bit down and funky. Um, again, it's a self card, need to self nurture. Notice here the person's in gray uh, or black and white, and then 
over here, they're not even looking to where the color is. So it's like, you might need to get out of yourself. You may need to pick up a, a canvas and paints and just put, throw yourself into something, um, a creative project, maybe even a puzzle. Um, I feel like you do need to reach out to someone else and focus on someone else to get outside of yourself because otherwise it feels like if you just stay with you, it can get kind of stanky this week. It feels like there's some energy that needs to flow for the Sagittarius. Get out and take a walk regularly. Like you want to keep your energy from being blocked up. It's like the, I was talking about earlier with the backed up energy. That's definitely what's going on with the Sagittarius. Need to get some energy flowing. So, um, and you will feel better. Capricorns. All right, the healing card is coming with the Capricorn. So you may guys, some of you may be having some health crisis, health challenge, and there's some insight coming in psychically about your health and how to how to feel better in your mind, body, and spirit this week, Capricorn. There's some actions that you can take. There's some definitely some uh, stress and um, things you've been chewing over that would be good to let go of in this full moon that we're going to be having um, Friday night, Saturday morning. Um, but some healing can be achieved this week. Some uh, again, the hands of the divine, it would be good to put yourself in the hands of another healer too, if possible. Ask for people to pray for you. Get a massage, get some acupuncture, get some chiropractic care, get some Reiki. Um, at least be nurturing and loving with yourself. There's a harsh energy with the Capricorn. It feels like you're needing to be gentle with yourself. And part, I get this like fatigue energy, like you're tired of this issue, a long-term health crisis going on or a long-term issue with health. It may not be crisis. It may just be something chronic I'm getting, but that's, um, there's some light, some shifting around that this week. Oh, and, um, the Aquarius gets the harmony card as well. So this is um, Aquarius. This is your connection with someone that you have a psychic, a psych that you, comes across your psyche. That you think about a lot intuitively. You wonder if they're thinking about you. They are. There's definitely a connect. We're all connected, um, especially if you've had a connection with someone at any point in time. We're left with residues and energies of of people we've been with. It's like there's like a, a little piece of everyone we've ever interacted with, ever had relationship with. Kind of there's part of it that stays in our soul, stays in our psyche. Um, that's why it's a really important to be careful who you get intimate with, because you can definitely be left with residue of people that you don't want their energies, or it may be, you know, someone that's past that you really miss that is, but the, the message, um, Aquarius is that person is still connected to you, even if they've passed and not in your, their body anymore. Um, even if they're, um, somewhere else on the other side of the planet, if they're not, even if they're in their your town, but you haven't seen them, um, I get the feeling that there's a distance a disconnect from the person that you're thinking a lot of, and um, but they, there is a lot of love and connection there. Um, so Aquarius, you've got all these planets in your house right now, so you may just feel like over. <laughs> So definitely need to um, do things that bring yourself some harmony as well. And last but not least, we have the Pisces. Compromise card. All right, Pisces. You are in a situation where you're compromising yourself in some way. Um, it's not working for you. You're settling. Um, sometimes it could be a peaceful compromise. Okay, I'll, I'll give on this and I'll work towards he heading your way. But most often this card talks about a compromise that's not positive, that you're somehow blocking your energy, you're accepting less than you deserve in some 
way situation relationship in your life. So it's time to value yourself and know that you deserve the best is what this is saying, Pisces. So, um, all right, that's what I get. Short and sweet ones this week. If you want a longer one, you can contact me and, um, and get a reading with me. I do uh, tarot, channel tarot and astrology for all my clients. Usually do a combo of both for my private sessions. So you can check out my new website, which is psychedupmovement.com. Um, and I'll be putting that below. You can um, reach out to me through that website. You can reach out and send me an in email at bringoutthebuddha at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Uh, for your attention, for signing up to be, um, I can definitely tell Mercury has not gotten out of the shadow yet because my brain is definitely not back online yet. But uh, at any rate, subscribe. That's the word I'm looking for. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, if you will, please, if you haven't already. Send it to your friends, share it, like it. Uh, if you're seeing this on Facebook, make a comment, share it, like it, love it. Love you guys. Peace.